seems like all people who are trying to abolish slavery only have one argument, and that's that it's immoral. And that's like the people who are pro slavery, they have like a lot more arguments. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to ask Philip Sal. Uh, uh, his role? I'm sorry. Equiano. Equiano. Um, what do you think about the Bible saying slavery is okay? Just because somebody says it's okay doesn't mean it is. If just because <laughs> someone says something's okay doesn't mean it is, then who defines what's moral? For that reason, you may say that slavery is immoral, but other people would say it's not moral. So who makes the de who makes the terms here? Wait, street. I did. Did you say that it? I just. You did. It, <laughs> you said that some people may say it's immoral, and then, and then you said some people might say it's not immoral. No, it's not moral. Some pe yeah, some people might say that slavery but is. But you're not just saying moral. it's. You said it's immoral and not moral. No, what I was saying is that if if you say that, like, some people say that. It, it Just because the Bible says that slavery is okay doesn't mean it is. But some people, uh, you all think that slavery is immoral, so who makes the terms in this argument? Like, who says what's moral and what's not? The actions of the people set what's moral and what's not. Um, if someone's treating someone, uh, if, if humanity is mistreating, or if someone is mistreating a slave, <coughs> it means they're, they're the ones who are being immoral. That's what's making slavery immoral. The collective the majority of masters and slave traders are treating people immoral. So, as a whole, it's immoral. Yes, Miss Hayrick's assistant may speak. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I think we should do things that make everybody happy, and I don't think slaves are happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you have to, everyone has to look at it from different perspectives. Like, from a slave's perspective, if they were to look at slavery, and if they were trying to look at it from, like, the owner's perspective, they they could not see anything. They could see the benefits of it, but it's more of the negative results that cause for them. And if the slave owners look at it from the slave's perspective, they're obviously not going to want to be in that position. So. Captain Kimber? I think if the slaves want, as slave owners, to look at it from the slave's perspective, why can't the slaves look at it from our perspective? <laughs> this is really, they're living in our country, they should respect that and follow our rules because they get to live here. <laughs> and also, something that one of these commoners was saying, I think she was, <laughs> I think she was trying to ask who defines the, de the term of immoral? Yeah. What? Who says that it's immoral? I'm asking um, this person. Equiano, <laughs> what, ma what makes it immoral? Who gets to decide what the definition of immoral is? Actions define what immoral is. But how do we know that they're immoral? Maybe those actions are moral. That's what we're trying to say here. Okay, Ms. Hayrick and then Mr. Wilberforce. So killing people and slaughtering people and torturing them is... People not obeying is moral, but what if they're not obeying? Or what if they are obeying and people are just doing it for fun? And also you said that people are, that the slaves are living in the country. And they were forced to live in their country. No, it's not. They were forced to live in their country. You can't be forced to live in their country. Because you don't like their culture, doesn't mean they have to live in their country. They don't like the white man. <laughs> it's cool, though. Yes, I'm trying to turn this off so I can put you in a pot. <laughs>